Welcome to the Conversations with Anna podcast. My name is Dr. Anna Stump, the Golden Ticket Professor, a self-proclaimed edutainer. I'm a former business executive turned high school teacher turned college professor. And in the past three decades of that transition, I have spent time with several generations. And with that as my foundation, I have some stories to tell. In each episode, you'll hear stories or interviews that will help you focus on your own truth. I want you to feel accepted, motivated, supported, and then I want you to be able to take what you know about yourself and your truth, go out into this big old world we live in and apply that so you can move forward with a strategy for a more authentic life. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Now let's jump in to a conversation with Anna. It's early in the day, so much I want to do. I dedicate today to breaking rules. I'm gonna stick to a strategy. I'm gonna find out exactly what I'm made of. Is there really something wrong with just smiling the whole day long? Hi, and welcome to the bonus episode. This one is kind of an extension of our last episode where we talked about personality assessments, why you can take them, and then what you can do with your results. So rather than just cover all of those different um, assessments in that episode, I thought I'd make a bonus episode. So if you don't want to listen to this whole thing, you can head over to goldenticketprof.com, go to the podcast page, find the podcast for the personality assessments. They're listed there with links and the show notes kind of explain everything. If there's one you're not familiar with, you want to head back over to the podcast and listen to it. Or if you're interested in hearing, I kind of give just an overview on my experiences. I'm not breaking them down psychologically, scientifically, um, just kind of telling you my experiences with them, what I liked about them, um, maybe what I didn't like about them. So um, feel free to do your homework first, or you can just listen to this episode um, talking about each of these assessments. Let's start. I mentioned the Enneagram huge right now. Big, big, big stuff, right? So the Enneagram, if you haven't heard of it, is an assessment that is um, has nine personality types. And you are given like um, a main type. And then there you have wings and subtypes. And you can have a triad. You have all, I mean, it's very complex. I have some friends where they work the entire office and like the whole organization has adopted it. They use an app. They understand. I mean, it's like part of how they manage. It's very interesting to watch that whole thing. I'll be really honest. When this whole phenomenon started was with, I was teaching undergrads and some of my students were like, have you taken it? What are you? What are you? And I was like, I don't have time. I was in the middle of my dissertation. Like I don't have time. And they said, well, you know, like you really should read the book, the whole book, The Road Back to You, and you should read it and then you will discover what your type is. And I was like, well, that's not happening anytime soon. Like, <laughs> No more reading for me right now. I've got other things going on. So they were like, well, you can go ahead and jump on here and take this test, right? So I did. I took it. I came back with what my type was and they were all like, oh, yeah, 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 right. You know, um, then once I got a little bit interested in it, I started, you know, a Pinterest board and I started following Instagram accounts and I started looking things up and I started reading things and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then I did get the book and I did just open it up to my type. I'll be honest. I've not read the whole book yet. I'm still obsessing over how many times I can read my type eight in that book and will run across a sentence that knocks the wind out of me. Um, the big one, the big, big, big one that I read that I'm still processing. It's been months and I'm still process processing it is when it says like what you consider passion, other people find to be intimidation. And I was like, what in the world? Like my whole life, people have said things like, oh my gosh, when I first met you, you were so intimidating. And I always have found that to be very odd because I'm just like a chatty clown the only thing I'm missing are like uh, big shoes. And honestly, my feet went up a shoe size when I was pregnant. So I feel like I do have big clown shoes most days. And I'm like, how in the world am I, am I intimidating? I'm like a big girl and I have a big loud mouth. So is that intimidating? I don't know. 
But I always thought that was a little crazy. But I'm not joking. I read that sentence in that book and it's still with me. Like I'm thinking, I get that. I get that. Like my passion might scare the daylights out of somebody to the point that they think I probably shouldn't be alone with this girl. (laughs) Right? Like just you want to talk about a high level of self-awareness that I needed to know that because as I start to recognize when I'm talking to people, if I speak to new people or when I meet new people or if I'm in a new situation and I start talking and I watch people's body language, I think, oh, you're doing it again. You're doing it again. Right. Sometimes I have to stop and I'm not joking. Like it's super easy for me to be like, Oh, so guess what? I read the Enneagram and I'll tell that story. Right. Like I just need for people to know I'm probably not going to change. I love my level of passion. It is a lot depending on what we're talking about, but I think it's really important for the other person for me to like acknowledge that I'm like that. And you know, yeah, If I start to tamper that down, if I start to like use all of my energy and develop a new muscle around not being passionate or not being loud or not being all the things that make me me, I'm not giving 100% to like outcomes and things at work. I'm not giving 100% to my relationships. I'm giving about 60% because I'm working on myself with the other 40 and I'm not really sure that needs to happen. So Just looking at patterns and behaviors in in different contexts and those types of things I think are super important. The Enneagram is complex, but it is extremely interesting. And like I said, it's super buzzy right now. So there's lots of, I have a Pinterest board about it. I follow four or five Enneagram based accounts on Instagram, which is quite honestly, I'll just come clean. That's how I'm learning the most about other numbers. Um, So I'm an eight. That's like the active controller with either a seven or a nine. I haven't really, there's a paid um, assessments. I haven't taken those yet to figure out which one my wing is. Um, I'm thinking seven. That's the like enthusiastic visionary versus the nine, which is the peacemaker. Not really sure about that. I'd have to read it about it a little more, but I'm, I'm real focused on myself right now <laughs> when it comes to learning about the Enneagram. So you um, can find EnneagramTest.net is the free version that I took, um, but the Enneagram Institute and the Integrative Nine are other places. I listen to um, Females on Fire podcast and um Luckadoo had uh, Christy Fountain on. She has a PhD and is making the Enneagram. She's got, um, she and her best friend do a podcast. It's very interesting. I'll put all these links in the show notes, but she suggests going to and taking like uh, one of the more comprehensive paid um, assessments. There's one for 12 bucks. I believe that's the Enneagram Institute. And then the Integrative Nine's got one for 60 and one for $120. And it'll give you all types of things. Really, um, both that Enneagram Nine has just as much um, information for teams and organizations as it does individuals. So you can see a lot of power um, behind the Enneagram, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I have, again, um, I never... I. Am a visual learner and a kinesthetic learner. Like I like to see pictures and I like to like get up and do and move and touch things to see how they work. Um, so seeing a bunch of infographics on Pinterest and, um, in Instagram have really helped me learn about these. So that's been a much easier than sitting down and much more palatable with the little bit of time I have in the evenings than reading the whole book. Um, but that is a goal someday. I do want to learn um, more about that. So definitely, um, the Enneagram super fascinating, uh, Myers Briggs. I've mentioned that a couple times. So I did not realize that Myers Briggs was the um, shortcut they call it the MBTI, right? This acronym, the most popular personality test in the world. I read a story from the New Yorker um, that was written in 2018. More than 2 million people take the Myers Briggs every year. It's used in 26 countries on employees, students, soldiers, potential marriage partners. It's used by Fortune 500 companies, universities, self improvement seminars, wellness retreats. All these things are talked about in the article. 
Um, there are nearly more than 2,000 different personality tests on the market, and most of them, according to author of this article in The New Yorker, are just knockoffs of the Myers-Briggs. So Myers-Briggs is legit the number one um, test in the world right now. So there you have that. Um, you can go to mbtionline.com, and you can take a test there for $45. Um, I, again, just found a free test, but the 16 personality types talk about introverts, extroverts, sensors, and intuitive, like, you know, depending on how you process that, thinkers and feelers, judgers, perceivers, all of those things. So you have no doubt, you know, taken one of these to get your four letter type um, and then knowing what to do with that, how to break it down. I think once you know your type, then you can start to do some research um, into getting more information on, you know, how do you do with stress? How do you do with this? How do you do with that? And I will say 16personalities.com has become like one of my favorite um, personality profile um, companies. Uh, it's a free test, 16personalities.com. Um, they kind of use the NTFJS. They use those same types of things, but they break them down into different um, categories and subcategories. So uh, they have analysts, diplomats, sentinels, and explorers. So I'm an explorer, but my subtype is the entertainer. And I think, hello, <laughs> yes. So <laughs> you will notice that as humans, we tend to like the assessment or the results that give us the most validation as to what we already knew about ourselves, right? But you have to dig a little deeper than that, right? When I click on the entertainer page of 16personalities.com, it says under the words introduction, I'm selfish, impatient, and a little insecure, Okay, well, if I'm being honest, check, check, and check. I make mistakes. I'm out of control and at times hard to handle. But if you can't handle me at my worst, you surely don't deserve me at my best. And I was sitting there thinking, these people are brilliant. And then I looked down and realized that's a Marilyn Monroe quote. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Perfect. I am all those things like, yeah, but they do a really nice job of kind of putting some fun, whimsical pop culture and other things into these personality profiles. They have colors and certain characters, but the great thing about it is when you give them your email address, they, they try and sell a little, but they will provide some content to you with some emails just for a little while. Um, that's actually super helpful. I created a folder and saved all of their emails. And then when the whole pandemic started, uh, like March of 2020, when things started getting crazy, they started sending out like, how do you handle uncertainty? How do you deal with stress? What do you do when you're an entertainer and you're stuck at home? Like it was really incredible value. So they became one of my favorites. Um, but really good information here. They, it does not take long to take and it's free and they provide really good value. So that's 16 personalities.com. Um, the Holland code is another one that's been around quite some time. You find it a lot or versions of it on college career, uh, center web pages because this is a career test. Um, and the one I've linked to is at truity.com, which I think has a ton of like personality tests and type, those types of things. But this is a scientific Holland code model to tell you which jobs suit your interests, your talents, your aptitudes, those types of things. And it spits out your results in like six major job areas, which is funny when I gave these in the MBA class, all my analytical people who were like um, data analysts or engineers or accountants, one of their top jobs was always like air traffic controller <laughs> and they would roll their eyes and I'm like well I mean it fits it's not maybe where you want to go but so this is always good for younger people that whole like what color is your parachute kind of thing is kind of based off of something similar to this um so that one's a really good one the um via character 
character.org, V-I-A character.org was not one that I had heard of before, but I was doing research for this podcast. I ran across it. The VIA or VIA survey is free and it's a scientific surveys of character strengths and it will give you like a 15 minute or less test. It like a kind of uncovers your different strengths. Um, You register. The thing I like, I'm super intrigued by, I'm going to have my son take it. They've got a youth survey on the same page. So via character.org, they have an adult and a youth um, and free scientific review is what it says of these things. But it came up with, and I don't know that I've ever seen this, my number one strengths profile on here was humor. Liking to laugh and tease, bringing smiles to other people. Hello. Like, yeah. Then it was bravery, which again, as I read, not shrinking from a threat, challenging, going head on into difficulty. Then I'm thinking about my Enneagram. I'm thinking about my, you know, the, the humor one puts me right back with the entertainer of the 16 personalities. So looking for trends, for threads you can pull for those types of things. That's what I want you to get out of this. Um, I thought it was really hilarious. The, the Via Strengths profile comes down to 24 character traits. My bottom one, my number 24, self-regulation. <laughs> Um, controlling your appetites and emotions. Oh, hello. Yeah. Uh huh. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, everything in between, I kind of laughed about. I was really felt spot on about these. And then I did the worst thing you can do as a spouse, right? I pulled the, did these pants make me look fat thing with my husband last night? Um, because we were like sitting around waiting for the Instapot to finish our dinner. And I was like, oh, hey, I took this new personality assessment thing today. And as I'm looking at the list, I thought there's no way he's going to think of things like social intelligence or whatever. So I said, there's 24 of them. I'm going to throw out an adjective. And I want you to tell me if you think it comes near the top of my list or the bottom of my list. It literally looked like I pulled a gun on him. (laughs) You know, he was looking at me like there's no right or there's no right way to get out of this for me. And so I only did a couple of them and I threw him some really low ball curves, you know, like no curves, but I was like, here's a under underhanded pitch humor. And he was like, Oh, that's gotta be near the top. Um, those types of things. But the, there were a couple in there, like humility, he thought would have been much higher. Um, apparently he doesn't know me that well at work, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was really fun, <laughs> like fun for me for like two minutes. And then I realized, okay, that was actually pretty mean. Um, probably shouldn't do that. But I was really, I thought this one was really a new one. Um, I hadn't seen before and I was kind of impressed with it. It was kind of interesting. So that was the um, VIA via survey, scientific survey of character strengths. So that was interesting, um, which kind of leads me into one that since I brought my husband into this, we'll talk about that uh, used to just be right way back before we had the internet, um, a book, and that is Love Languages. And my husband and I were signed the Five Love Languages book um, as part of our premarital counseling. And quite honestly, I'm really not sure what life together would be like had we not read that. So now they have love languages at work and love languages, you know, for all kinds of things, parenting, all, all the things. But basically what it talks about is your five love languages are things like words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, physical touch, those types of things. So, man, there's some power in this. My love language is acts of service. And that actually works really well in our marriage because my husband, I joke all the time. um, My idea of romance is when he fills my gas tank. (laughs) Like, and he loves to do that stuff, right? Like he loves, I think, men being hunters and gatherers. And if you go off on that whole, you know, men are from, is it Venus and women are from Mars, whichever planet you're supposed to be from. um, Like the differences in us, like he can easily pull off an act of service much better than trying to plan some romantic gesture. So um, on days like, you know, if he runs an errand and I go out the next morning to get my car and it's full of gas, I, I literally take a picture of it. I text it to him. I'm like, thank you so much. I love this because my husband's top 
love language is words of affirmation. So I can't just say, oh my gosh, you're so nice or you're such a good person or I appreciate you because that's not enough. Words of affirmation have to go deeper for these people. So when I say things like, oh my gosh, like I just love how you love me or I appreciate you, you can always tell he's looking at me like, and why are you saying this right now, right? Because it's super important for them to understand where it's coming from. So my words of affirmation, um, luckily my top strength is communication. I'm really good at that, right? Really good at that. So he picked a winner in that at category and I picked a winner too. Like we really did a nice job <laughs> matching up these two things. Um, but we talked, um, I do some career and employee engagement training. So like, what does this look like at work, right? Especially physical touch, because that'll get you in some trouble. But physical touch could be like eye contact, putting down your phone and giving someone your full attention. That's physical touch at work, right? I mean, there's a lot to these in certain contexts. But going to fivelovelanguages.com, taking this, um, we've had our son take it as well. Um, because there's a lot to learn, not just about your love language, because again, you know, walking around with your Beyonce um, strut and telling people, this is my love language, learn to speak it, become fluent. It's not really going to develop relationships, understanding everyone else's, right? And being able to identify those, I think is super important too. But Love Languages has been around for a long time, super great book to read, lots of good um, resources and things right here on their website too, though. Um. The DISC personality, I have taken that as part of a sales job. They come in different forms. Usually DISC is one of those things that is purchased by an employer and um, done training around for your employees, especially in a sales type environment. But there's a couple of free ones. Um, the one, two, three DISC test and uh, DiscPersonalityTesting.com were the ones I found. But DISC stands for Dominance, Influence, Compliance, and Steadiness. So this is another one that is based off of Carl Jung and it talks about um, just all the different ways you can group. And again, these you'll start to notice these personality tests are like, um, there's a really good article I'm going to talk about here in a minute, and then I'll link to it. But it's like, do you love like cheese or popcorn? And as you read this, you're like, but I love them both. So then you struggle to pick one. You're like, okay, I'm going to pick cheese. But what the assessment doesn't know is that you love popcorn, right? So when you're given these instruments to do these assessments, that's why most people find flaws in them, right? Like it's not a real true you know, cheese is the number one thing I love the most when it comes to all the foods. It's just my favorite in this moment of the two you gave me to choose from. And if I sat long enough, I could have probably given popcorn more credit and put it at the top. So just, you know, taking that into consideration. But DISC, as I have seen it, um, and someone out there may know more about it, but the DISC factors in terms of your behavior towards others and things that you do every day in terms of dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance really fall more into line in your work environment. And especially when it comes to maybe um, sales or something uh, more professional and competitive like that. So I could be wrong about that. Um, the one thing I did love about my DISC profile, and this was a very expensive paid profile that I got from an employer one time talked to it had two whole pages in when if you want to talk to Anna and if you manage Anna and man the I set and read those from top to bottom not because I'm gonna ever run into another person like me necessarily to manage but I thought oh it would be really helpful for me to know you know how to ask for things from my supervisors or how to approach things or what are red flags like you know when it comes to trying to deal with me at work. Like I thought that was really important and it was very interesting. Um, another one that I just learned about a few weeks ago from a friend is high five test.com high number five, H I G H five test.com really another cool test where you can just focus on strengths um, over 5 million people have taken it. They work with a ton of companies, but they talk about taking these 
assessments, especially theirs, obviously, around strengths because it helps you know your best self. Hello, your truth, right? The one we have a hard time focusing on um, just naturally. Discover what's unique about you, what motivates you and drives you. Be happier, achieve your goals, increase your confidence, build strong relationships, progress your career. Well, hello, that's nothing wrong with any of that stuff, right? They've worked with a lot of companies, um, but they do a really nice job explaining the methods of their tests, their strengths research, who it's for. They have individuals, teams, organizations. You can become a coach, all those types of things. But really fascinating. I love, again, the information they send you after you take their assessment and like what you get from it. So for a free test, I found a ton of power and strength in this assessment and the results, I really enjoyed this one. So that's high five test. Um, and that's another good one. Then another one I found a few years ago, this is the came out of the MLM, the multi-level level marketing world where um, you become your own entrepreneur selling, you know, different wares and different things. Um, but I thought it was kind of a fun little test, a little assessment. And I threw it in one summer when I was teaching the MBAs. And literally every time we went around the room and I asked them their favorite assessment, they listed this one. Almost everyone, different different people in different industries with different personality types mention this at least in their top two or three every single time. So clarity on fire quiz, a clarity on fire.com forward slash quiz clarity on fire. This talks about your personal, like the ideal relationship between you personally and the career or your passion in life. So like it tells you how to best tie what to do for a living. Um, but it's different than the Holland code, right? And nobody's getting any air traffic controller thing out of here, but it comes out with you're either a fire starter, a tribe member, a side hustler, or a thriver, which are just titles they threw out. But these are like passion profiles and they kind of just describe how you approach things. So even if you're a side hustler, it talks about how you are, how, like how you approach work. It's not saying go out and get a side hustle, right? The, the fire starter, it's not telling you to go out and, you know, start your own company or anything, but it does give you, it's free. It's pretty quick and easy. Um, but it was really interesting how much these business professionals and people that were getting an MBA really put some stock in these results. So again, just interesting, um, maybe not perfect, by any means. Coming down to the bottom of my list, Strengths Finders, Clifton Strengths is another big, 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 big one. Um, the Gallup folks that came up with Strengths Finders. But I'm actually going to have a friend on in a few episodes who is a certified strengths coach, and we're going to talk a lot about strengths. Strengths is um, a little expensive. And I say that because the base assessment's like $25. You pay a little more if you want your full 34 But the real power, I think, is in a session. And those are run about $50 an hour, I think. And again, I took it at work one time, paid the company paid for it. I took it. I read it. It was great. I filed it away, got on with my life. Um, and then when I was teaching at the university, we started um, having our students take these. And then we gave them sessions with a strengths coach. And my dean said, if you haven't had a session, you should have a session. So I did. And when I tell you, and I will tell you again, when we have um, the coach on life altering, like completely rocked my world. And I was like, in my mid 40s when that happened. <laughs> so I have a, I'm setting aside a whole show for her because she has probably been the one to get me more into the empathy approach to understanding other people's like strengths and like why strengths is important. And that kind of, so strengths finders is not one I'm going to spend a lot of time with on this show. Um, actually I'm done talking about it. So that's exactly how much time I'm going to spend on it. But the other thing I mentioned earlier was this, this um, professor who posted a series of articles about personality traits. And she did a really amazing job on psychologytoday.com. She wrote these blog posts. Um, but she's fascinating. And I read them all. Um, it's Jennifer Fayard, F-A-Y-A-R-D. She's a PhD. She's the author of a book called People Are Strange, which hello, couldn't think of a better, more true title. 
but she studies the relationship between personality and traits, emotional experiences, and like if these things are valid. So these are, blog articles that she wrote for psychology today. If you're at all interested in if these things are accurate, why they're popular, which ones are best, like this little, um, her blog posts are super easy to read. She's got a lot of, um, humor, those types of things. Like it's, she does a nice job with them, but she recommended a, an assessment called the big five, um, from personalitylab.org. So I went ahead and took this because, hey, free. Um, the, they had a very odd survey and collected a lot of data from you at the end. Things about how you feel about politics, your zip code, your a lot of things. So if you're not comfortable with giving that, but they base everything on research. Um, it's all scientific re- so I went ahead and did it um they have my name they have my age and my zip code and a bunch of other stuff and clearly all of my traits but I went ahead and did it just because I was interested and that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily really bother me I'm a marketer if I didn't like people collecting demographic data I'd be a giant hypocrite but I wanted to warn you I was a little taken aback I was shocked by it but it was good so the personalitylab.org they have the big five which they call extraversion agreeableness, conscientiousness, negative emotionality, and open-mindedness. Like, I think they call them the big five because those are all ginormous words, right? Like those are mouthfuls. Um, But these things are scientifically valid. They capture kind of the um, human experience and measure what the scientist calls only common trait characteristics that you can compare across individuals. They give you like a thing they don't account for everything, but they do tend to like pull up the like the bigger traits. So this was an interesting one. I was glad that I took it. Um, of course, my extroversion on a scale from zero to a hundred is an eighty-eight, and it talks a lot about like if you're an ex- high score on an extroversion, you tend to be talkative, energetic. Well, here I am today in a room by myself talking to a microphone. So clearly check. Um, but it talks about how I am in a group. Then it gives you the flip side of like the low scores, your agreeableness, um, high scores tend to be considerate or polite versus people who are direct and blunt. I'm a 60. I thought I would be a little lower, but apparently I'm more considerate and polite while I'm being direct and blunt. Hello, sarcasm. That should be on there. They should check for that. Um, Conscientiousness are people that are organized and responsible versus spontaneous. Um, Negative emotionality. You have, if you are high score on negative emotionality, um, you have, you're more sensitive and have mood swings. If you're a low score, which I'm a 32, um, you tend to be emotionally stable and resilient. I will go with that. I don't know about the next one. You usually stay calm, even in stressful situations. I'm probably as calm as I'm ever going to get, I guess, um, during those. And then open-mindedness are people who generally want to try new activities or new ideas versus people who are traditional down to earth and stick with tried and true ways of doing things. They also on this website, once you get to your results, after you go through the demographic type thing, and there was not an opt out on that that I can see. It's why I mentioned it. Um, I didn't want you to waste your time if you were like, not happening. Um, There's an understand your child test. So I'm going to have my son take that one sometime. Um, But it talks, um, they give a lot of guides to theory and practice and some psychology and some blogs about personality. There's a lot of really good things um, on this website when I got my personality um, results. So those are the assessments that I wanted to cover. And again, I will put all of those on the show notes on my website, goldenticketprof.com. So now you've taken all these, resist the urge to just walk away, right? To be like, oh, that one was fun. Or look, I'm an eight. I'm going to jump all over Pinterest and learn about myself. I want you to do some work now. And whether it's creating the visual that I talked about on the previous episode with the word cloud or journaling or post-it notes or just making lists for yourself, questioning things about yourself to find your truth, 
I'm also a big fan of talking to other people about it and, you know, maybe not putting them on the spot like I did my husband with my list, but maybe having them or people in your life or at work, people, your friends take the assessments and then talk about it. Just whatever you have to do to get to that level of acceptance where you're comfortable with it. And if you're finding one of these assessments particularly hard to resonate with, just move on to another one. So I gave you so many. There's no right or wrong. There's no perfect fit. There's no one size fits all. Just be looking for threads and themes that you can get comfortable with um, expressing yourself, finding your truth and starting as a foundation, because we're certainly not done. This is not your path forward. This is not your whole truth. These are just some themes, some adjectives, some words, some launching pads for you to continue to move forward. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, like I said, at the end of the last episode, if you have other assessments, reach out, let me know. You can post them on my Facebook page, Golden ticketprof.com. You can hit me up on LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or on my website. You can send me an email at Anna at goldenticketprof.com. Get a hold of me. Let me know how this is going for you. I'm really intentional about that. And if you're getting a different result or you have a different outcome or a different opinion, I want to hear about that. We'll, We'll do some updates to these if I start hearing from things. These conversations with Anna can go more than one way, you guys. All right. I hope to hear from you and I hope this was beneficial list and, um, see you all at the next time we can have a conversation with Anna. 